I'm going to be talking about Cassiopeia today, a scheme for practical on-chain witness encryption. Uh, this work was done by me and my co-author, Judy Sizindros at Stanford U University. Um, okay, so first let's go through what is witness encryption. Um, witness encryption involves a secret S an instance X of an NP relation R, uh, for example, X may be a graph, the relation itself might be a Hamiltonian cycle problem. And the dealer encrypts a secret for a particular instance relation pair. The, anybody can come along and decrypt this secret only if they know a witness for that particular instance relation pair. So for example, this would just simply be the particular Ham Hamiltonian cycle that corresponds to, to that particular graph. In the blockchain setting, uh, this instance relation pair is just not, is nothing more than a Boolean function in a smart contract, and this is and this kind of encryption is useful to instantiate other uh, constructions, such as, for example, Hamlock encryption. Um, so I guess what is Hamlock encryption and why is it useful? Uh, so Hamlock encryption involves a dealer which encrypts a secret for a particular time t in the future. Um, the secret can only be decrypted if the current time is at least t, um, at, at which point everybody can have access um, to this particular secret. In the blockchain setting, Hamlock encryption is a subset of witness encryption where the instance relation pair is just the time t in the future, and the witness is the current time of block that is observed uh, in the on-chain state. This is a useful primitive to prevent front running. As you can imagine, this can be implemented by first time lock encrypting the transactions for a future block, um, ordering the transactions before the decryption time. And then once the decryption time uh, arrives, the transactions have already been ordered. Um, so this can be used to prevent front running. Um, we actually see that there is uh, that the the way to implement uh, this um, time lock verifier is actually just a few lines of code um, in the smart contract. It's actually not, not too bad. Uh, but some challenges in implementing these schemes are that time lock and witness encryption are more or less impractical in the standard model. Um, traditionally, time lock encryption involves solving hard puzzles to delay the adversary, as in proof of work, and witness encryption um, in the standard model is very inefficient and its security is often also debated. So if we st strengthen trust assumptions somehow by leveraging the honest majority assumption that's already present in a lot of blockchain validated committees, um, what can we get out of this? So we propose uh, social witness encryption, which is basically we strengthen the trust assumption by assuming that we have a partially trusted committee of participants that hold the, the secret until a witness is presented. Uh, we assume that at least T participants uh, in this committee are honest. And so we just use secret sharing to split the secret into N shares, one for each participant. And it can only be decrypted if at least T of them re reveal their own shares. Um, Existing, many existing solutions exist um, that instantiate with encryption using secret sharing, although most of them are done at the, the consensus la layer. Uh, and so they're not incentivized or implemented as a smart contract, which we want to do for ease of composability with the rest of the blockchain ecosystem. But once we, inst when once we instantiate it as a smart contract, um, then the main problem is that there, there may, might be uh, an issue with gas cost, um, which is why we consider a static committee rather than a dynamic committee. So we, so we assume that the participants will hold their secret shares for the duration of the secret rather than resharing their, their secret shares in continuous epochs. So our main contributions are that uh, we propose a practical smart contract instantiation of witness encryption. Um, we propose an incentive mechanism as well, and we provide an open source implementation and benchmark uh, for our scheme. So let's see how we can instantiate a 
primitive social witness encryption scheme from secret sharing. First of all, the dealer will take this, their secret S, generate secret shares, um, and encrypt each of the secret shares with the public key of the corresponding participant. The dealer will then send the encrypted secret shares along with the instance to encrypt these four to the smart contract, at which point the, the committee members can take their encrypted shares and just store them for the duration of the for the duration of the secret. Um, once a valid witness is presented, the each of the participants will decrypt their encrypted share and then send it back to the smart contract. Uh, since it's public, anybody can take these decrypted shares and reconstruct um, the, the original secret. Now, there are some problems with this initial scheme. Um, Namely, uh, the dealer can be adversarial, uh, they can generate inconsistent shares. Uh, and the other problem is that uh, the committee members or the participants can, can be adversarial themselves. So they may publish shares at the end that don't match what the dealer gave them at the very beginning. And so our goals are to be able to reject inconsistent dealership and reject invalid shares given by participants and mainly we want to do this because we want to slash. Um, so in particular, we want to punish the, the committee members who don't reveal at the end of the day, um, but we don't want to punish them wrongly. So if the dealer dealt some inconsistent shares at the beginning, we don't want to punish uh, the committee members and we just want to re reject that, that inconsistent dealership at the very beginning. And the solution to this is to use something called publicly verifiable secret sharing. So I'll go through a little bit of how of um, what that what that is. So let's say we want to do social witness encryption from uh, PBSS uh, without slashing first. So similarly, again, the dealer will generate encrypted secret shares, uh, th this time with a proof PID of distribution. Um, this proof will be verified by the smart contract to make sure that the dealer is dealing uh, consistent shares. The dealer sends the instance, the encrypted shares, and the proof towards the smart contract, at which point the smart contract will verify that the encrypted shares are consistent with one another. If it fails, it will revert the transaction. It will then, as, as usual, um, participants will be able to pull their encrypted share uh, from the smart contract and, and store for the duration of the secret. Once a valid witness is um, presented, the committee members will decrypt their secret share. But in decrypting, they will also need to provide a proof of um, uh, proof of, of valid decryption. Uh, and the smart contract will verify that that share that they decrypted corresponds to what the dealer gave at the very beginning. And if not, then it will revert the particular transaction where the committee member submitted that particular share. And then after that, anybody can reconstruct the original secret as usual. Okay, well, this scheme is actually still insecure because nothing really ties the instance to the ciphertext. So you could imagine a replay attack where if the adversary knows some other instance X prime, such that they already know the witness W prime for that particular instance, um, they can use the same ciphertext with the new instance to break the encryption uh, by just submitting a new request to, to the smart contract. Even if we disallow duplicate ciphertexts um, due to the nature of secret sharing, uh, PBSS is actually linear, which makes it malleable. So you could imagine if I take the ciphertext, I, I multiply it by two, I decrypt that ciphertext and I take the, the result and then divide it back by two, you would get the same result, um, which is which means this is not a, 
uh, not an appropriate mitigation strategy. So to highlight this a bit more, um, the dealer will basically generate the ciphertext. They send the ciphertext and, and the instance to the smart contract, but they get intercepted by, it, by an adversary. The adversary changes the, the instance slightly to something that they already know the witness for. Um, the smart contract thinks it's just, 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 just some other request. Um, once the adversary provides the witness for that instance, the committee just hands over the secret to the adversary, basically. So the way we mitigate this is we want to make sure that if we use the same ciphertext with a different instance and both the witness and the secret are not known, uh, the contract should basically reject the request. And the intuition is we want to mix the secret and the instance with a hash function such that they're inseparable. Uh, but we want to also prove that the dealer knows the actual pre-image of this hash so that they, so we need to prove that they know the secret and that secret needs to correspond with a cipher text. But we don't want to reveal this, right? Because, because we want to do this, because we, we want to ensure this on chain. Uh, so we need to do this in the zero knowledge. Um, so we will deliver a, a ZK snark um, because it has constant verification time. Uh, and, and that will be what solves our, our replay attack. More details uh, will probably be in, in, in the paper itself. Um, but yes. So in conclusion, we basically more or less have a social witness encryption scheme from PBSS um, with honest majority. It has some desirable properties, which are correctness. So if the dealer is honest, uh, then they can recover S with a valid witness. And security, because the adversary, um, who is not a dealer, cannot learn the secret without the witness itself. Um, now let's see how we can incentivize this scheme for honest participation. Um, so the goal here is to punish dishonest committee members and incentivize honest committee members, though the caveat is that dishonest does not mean that um, this, this, the dishonest just means that that the committee members don't uh, re reveal their shares at the end of the day. Um, which is equivalent to really invalid shares because a smart contract will check this anyways. So this gives you correctness under rational majority, but there's no actual security guarantee uh, because the community members can always re re reveal their shares early and we wouldn't be able to catch them um, in, in the scheme. Okay. So how do we ensure this? Uh, so, in this augmented scheme, the dealer will deposit a holding fee, F, which is basically a reward to each of the committee members for holding the secret for a particular time. Um, each participant will be re reserved a share of the holding fee. Uh, the dealer will also specify a reparation price, which is what is paid to the dealer in the event that the secret is irrecoverable, even with a valid witness which corresponds to when not enough committee members re review their valid shares um, af after a valid witness is found. The participants will also deposit collateral to slash and to pay the reparation price. Um, but we want to make sure that honest participants are never slash and are always rewarded and are always rewarded appropriately. We also want to make sure that dishonest committees always forfeit their holding fee. So they're all slashed equally if the secret is not recoverable, even with a valid witness. And in our scheme, the committee members, uh, the reparation price is made up of the forfeited holding fees and the collateral, the, that is slashed basically. 
And so more details about exactly how uh, these incentives work are also in the paper. But um, one other thing to note is that with this incentivized scheme now, the dealer needs to also specify a deadline to submit the witness because there is an increasing opportunity cost as, as the duration of the secret increases. Um, and so that's also in the paper, but um, I, we don't think to get to that right now. Yeah. So this is some benchmarks uh, for the on-chain gas costs. It's uh, appropriate for pretty sizes up to around 50 something um, where we hit the ETH block gas limit. But yeah, so the takeaways are that we have uh, witness encryption and time lock encryption. Uh, they're useful, but they're practical in the standard model, but can be made practical with a committee. Uh, we introduced some incentives uh, to promote honest participation. And we also have a benchmark smart contract implementation, which is open source. Thank you.